Okay, so we are going to show you today how to fit this lovely, super, very nice brake upgrade on the Land Rover Discovery 3. So, we have got, as most people in the UK and Europe, have got the diesel Discovery 3. But, they saved the super lush, big diameter brakes for the petrol Discovery 3. So, we are going to show you how to fit the Discovery 3 rear brakes onto the petrol ones, onto... The diesel car now we and they're the same as the disco four rears they are the same Three as the disco four rears i need to double check that i'll have to look at my spreadsheet i think they are i think they yeah are. i think they are yes um so that will give you the discovery four as well um right now let's have a look let's have a look we've done the front so the end will do the pointy thing to the video where we've done the front but the front also you could put a bigger diameter disc on so we've put the bigger disc on the front so it only seems right to keep the braking in proportion that we fit the bigger diameter to the back right not only have we fitted the bigger diameter brakes we've gone a little bit extra in that we fitted these drilled and grooved discs so these are supposed to give you better braking better cooling etc we've also gone a little bit extra again in that we've painted the non-functional parts of the disc and we've also painted the caliper as well now we'll put a kit together on the website and we're going to show you what we're going to put in the kit and we're going to show you fit in the kit so let's go and have a look at that now right so we are going to upgrade this side so this is what it looks like before it's a bit rusty and a bit worn um, it's not too bad actually um, but what are we going to put in the kit? So we're going to put a pair of brake discs in. Now, point to note, these, when you get them in the packet, they have a little label on the packet that says left hand and right hand. So we got a bit excited and ripped it open, but then we thought we'd better write left hand on the left hand one. Now, if you've taken them out of the packet and you're not sure which is which, if you start at the outer diameter and move in on the left hand one, you will move in an anti-clockwise direction. On the right hand one, you will move in a clockwise direction. So these grooves go the other way. Right. Okay, so that's the old disc we took off. This is the new disc. You can see, if I pop them on top of each other, it's a bigger difference. Now, one other way you can tell is if you look at your brake disc here on the diesel ones you've got quite an easy get your thumb in in between here let's just spin around quickly sorry we're going everywhere but so if you want to know if you've already had the upgrade you can't get your finger in there it's not possible to get your finger between the back plate and the brake disc okay right bigger disc great we've got that what else are we going to put in the kit right we are going to put a couple of useful little bits in here these are the torque screws now this goes in here and holds the drum just holds it on when you take the wheel off the original ones get all rounded this one's actually not too bad they get seized mashed up rounded so we will put the put one in if you're doing it yourself at home it's really nice you just put new bits in all done it they're only pens might as well right this little thing here a lot of cars have these missing so this goes in this little hole here and it's a little dust cap and you have to take this out oh gosh i can't fit it okay and it's got a nice little bit where you can grip it and pull it and that's where you adjust your handbrake shoes so often these are missing or mashed so we'll put one of those in these are your little carriers for your brake pads that sit inside your slider slider carrier i don't know what these are yes like a caliper carrier isn't it right now this is the trick so this is the old one we've taken off now initially they seem about the same size until you notice it's actually the location of the hole so what happened so this one does come all the way down here yeah. it's the same shape it's the same casting i reckon they've just done it they've put that mount right at the top and this mount which right means the that when it sits on the car this one if, if we line up the screw holes the red one sits further out which obviously when it's holding the brake caliper makes the brake caliper sit out further for the bigger disc. 
all obvious. So you don't need to change your calipers for this upgrade. It's just, this is really the key to it. It's this one that makes the caliper sit out further and the bigger disc. Um, brake pads, these are just an upgraded brake pad. EBC Ultimax 2, we find these good. And they're the world's first eco-friendly brakes. Not quite sure what that means, but we'll love it anyway. Right. But they've got this extra groove in them, which apparently works well with this um, groove stuff and stop squealing and I don't know. Right, so obviously you'll get in the kit, you need this for left and right. So we've split it out. The only thing that is singular in the brake kit is the wear pad sensor. So this is nothing more than a, a wire that's got a sensor in it. And when your brake pads go down, I think it's here, doesn't it? It goes onto the, the disc and the metal disc shorts out the contact. So it's always worth changing those. And again, they're only a few pounds each. So always worth changing those out. Right, so that is the kit. You're probably doing this because your brake pads are worn, so you may as well upgrade at the same time rather than just replacing, which means your sensor's gonna be worn out and you're gonna to have to change it anyway. So we'll put that in. Right, the bits we supply won't be painted. If we get a lot of people asking for painted, we may well, we have got a spray booth, we may well get a batch painted um, and put those for sale. We, we're gonna change our caliper just to make it nice and red to match the rest of it. But you don't need to, you can keep the same one, keep your hoses bolted up. You shouldn't need to bleed your brakes no, for doing this upgrade. So it should be slightly more straightforward than we're doing. Um, now, if you want to do your rear brakes, the, the brake shoes and the brake adjustment is all the same as the Discovery form. We've already done the handbrake shoes. Ian's putting the little pointy thing there. We'll put the link there so you can see if you have to do the brake shoes, just follow the Disco 4 process. But this video is focusing on the Disco 3 diesel to petrol upgrade on the rear brakes. Right, we're now going to try and do it in real time. So let's have a go. Right, here we go. First thing we need to undo is the... I'm going to take the caliper off of the carrier or you're going to slacken off the I'm going to loosen box. this because this is always the trickiest job. So this is a Torx T50. D. Now I've got it loose already here because I want it to look flash on the video. But you can use one of these impact drivers <coughs> where when you hit it, it causes a rotation. But yeah, that's a Torx T50. And they're the ones we're replacing. Now, this is often the hardest part of the whole job. So it's worth jacking it up, getting that off. If you've got that off, you're, you're halfway there. Um, right. Okay, now we're gonna do the slider bolts. Right, which is the best way of filming this, Ian? Are you lying down and you filming it? Or what? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ah. So you've got to access all those bolts in from the back there, haven't you? Yeah, so what you've got is you've got these two slider bolts here. Now these are 15, 13 mil, 13 these millimeter. Are. So you should be able to get a move in to start with, now depending on how seized your, slide, your old sliders are. Now, mine, well, they can spin like this sometimes, and then you end up with it rotating, in which case you will need to put a spanner on here. Which What's is a 15, which is hold. odd because generally they're bigger. They're generally 17, but don't get caught out. These ones were a 15. Alright. Plus or minus some dirt, I think, on these calipers. Yeah. So there we go. We've got that one out. Let me do the bottom. I'm going to come around the slide here. Am I going to be lucky? No, he's spinning. Which is a sort of good sign in a way, because it means the calipers are not seized. Yeah, if your sliders are seized, and they won't turn at all, which means you definitely but want to be But with this kit, you get that. complete new sliders, which is... But yeah, I'll just show you that. So we've got new rubbers, new sliders, nice and free moving, and new bolts and everything to go in there. So you get all of these new. So if you do find they're seized and knackered, don't worry too much. Right, now that should enable us to remove the caliper now, right? Alright, do we want to loosen it first? We need to push the pads back. Ah, oh, yeah, push the pads back. In fact, I'm just going to... I'm just going to nip one of those bolts back in. So you want to get these bolts loose first, probably. Then we're just going to wind them in a few threads just to stop it getting diverted and going wherever it wants. So, you then if you insert a screwdriver, you want to be on the outside of that disc there. And then we're just trying to push that whole slider that way, which will push the piston in. 
So have... this might be particularly difficult if you have got C sliders. You might not be able to do this. You might have to use a clamp and press your piston back. Now, one thing to watch is, as you push these in, you will push the fluid back up the system to the reservoir. So keep an eye on your reservoir. I'm going to have a look at that in a minute and check you're not overfilling it, okay? Right, but let's carry on while we're down here on the floor. Or we'll be up and down. Right then. So there's the two bolts. Now, you don't need these because you get new bolts in the new slider. Right, and then that allows us to take off the carrier there. And I've just got a couple of cable ties here. And I'm just going to tie it up to my, my exhaust, if I can get this right. I'm not, I want to stress that rubber pipe. And that just keeps it out the way. That so we just keep tying that up so the weight of the caliper isn't on that that rubber brake pipe. Right, and then if you want to just throw me the 15mm socket. Um, so then if you want to have a look around the back here, and we're then going to undo these two. Socket. Which are 12 sided, so they're a 15mm 12 sided socket you need for these. Okay. So these hold the this carrier onto the hub. Now we haven't we haven't practiced this to look good, but actually they're not too bad. If you just need to change your pads, then this is a good point. You can just slide your pads out towards you here. If you're just coming in to change your brake pads, take the caliper off, slide them out, grease up your new ones, put your new ones back in. Nice and easy job to do that. Now, our American friends, and we got quite a few of them on YouTube, they call these rotors, don't they? I'm going to take the brake disc. I should have said rotor for them. Right, now we've got the handbrake off, we've got the car jacked up. The other thing to point is when you park your car up, if you put it in off-road mode, it just puts the wheel arches up and gives you a little bit more room. Gives you some headspace up here, so you're not knocking out as much. Right then, so now, so we've removed the retaining screw, we've got that. Now that should be, with the handbrake off, he's, he's, he's in park so he's not going to rotate. It should be possible to slowly, now, depending where you were. Now our Disco 4, this came apart really easy. This one seems to be putting up more of a fight. Disco, our Disco 4 ones when we did it, if you watch that video, they just fell off. Yeah, there's no way of releasing the brakes, unfortunately. We've got the handbrake off, um, and you can't get to the adjuster because you can't turn it. Um, where's the cable coming? The handbrake. I think we're just going to keep going. The other side we just fall <laughs> off. Yeah, this was the same as the other side. Mm -hmm. 
and have one go at turning it with that bit of wood. Sometimes if we were to rotate it, we'll just like that. Right, we cheated, we stopped, but basically we did put a little wedge in behind here, but you don't want to push on these back plates too much. But you didn't want to watch me fight in. But there we go. There's that. Now we'll just give that a bit of a oh, well, give that a bit of a clean. And then we should be able to see what's happening. It's not worth putting a dust mask on with this. I'm gonna put a dust mask on quick. No, it's best I said I'm where to put my dust on. So yeah, this is the brake, the handbrake, which is on a, the drum brake within the disc. So these discs are a little, a little unconventional in that, that your handbrake and your foot brake are completely separate systems. Now this one is upside down to the other side. And the key is the, the what we're trying to get. Now what you're looking at is how much shoe you've got left on your on your brake here. So we've got plenty of brake shoe left here. Everything looks all right. Everything's moving freely. And um, what we need to look at is the adjuster down here. Now, and we need to check that this moves freely. So let's have a look. Yeah. Down. Should, be away from the Should be away from this way, yeah? Yeah, okay. There we go, is that? Um, right, and then we need to move it all the way that way. Which will... So we're going to slacken it right off, put the new drums on. The new drum, the new discs, the rotors there. Yeah. That's bottomed out now, so that's come to the end. So that now should... So as long as you're happy with that... Now what we're going to do, we're going to stop quickly and we're just going to paint, in fact we won't stop, we'll do it here, here and now. We're just going to paint the back plate. Be careful not to get any paint on your shoes, just to stop the... This is the kind of thing you can't do if you take it to a garage. They'll just disassemble and put it all back together. Whereas if you're doing it yourself, you get the chance to give other bits of freshen up at the same time. It's all about the laugh. Right. So we're going to put the new brake disc rotor on. So it's that countersunk hole needs to go down there. in your new this too much but we're still not on are we? Feels like it's getting there. How far off is that that hole in there? So I'm just gonna grab the new grab the new one of those, Let's see if he can see. Starting to grab him. Looks like he's pretty much home and dry now. Happy that, yeah? Yeah. Looks like you're sat on that centre board and the spigot ring. It looks like that lip's come out to meet it, yeah. which is where it should be. 
Right, and obviously this is where we're, we're going to have to spin this back round to the bottom to adjust this. Now, we're going to have to go and put him so we can spin him. Right, so one thing, if you can't rotate your disc um, with the handbrake off, um, you've got a problem with your handbrake shoes not releasing. We've just had to fit new handbrake shoes, not because they were worn out, um, but because the, the lever arm in the shoe had seized. And so the handbrake would deploy correctly, but it wasn't fully releasing, collapsing back in, which was causing it to drag. So we've just put new handbrake shoes on. Now, if you put new handbrake shoes on, you will be following my other video, and there's a special adjustment procedure for when you fit it new shoes. Ian's pointing to it now. Watch that. Like that. If you've just changed the the brake drum or the brake disc, the rotor like we're doing in this video, you just need to adjust your brakes. Now, the adjuster is at the pretty much the sort of six, half past six position down here. Okay. And what you'll, when you look in through there, you've got this little hole and you'll have to get a little torch and you look in for those little that little cog that we had. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the screwdriver on and we're going to move the cog, um, which is going to fire out and adjust the brakes. And we'll feel the brakes go tight. So at the moment, the brakes are loose enough. So if I go in here, now depending which way you've put it, it will depend which way you need to do it. So Ian's done it this way. And as I go, what you want to do is do it as tight as you can. All right? And you'll feel it getting tighter. All right, that's... That's tight now, and now you can't move that at all. So okay. the book says you've got to do it to a certain, to the, a to a certain torque, and you've got to twist it. But well, we checked that on the Discovery Four, and we found so as tight as you can, and it's one click away. So the book says you then have to release it exactly eight, but we found do it as tight as you can and, back and release it nine. Yeah. And Okay, and then you should just be able to turn that by hand, okay? And then you're done. Right, where's my little plug? And then get the little plug that we put in the kit. Plug that in. Now, right, one more video to link to. If you have fitted new shoes, you do need to do a brake, a handbrake shoe bedding in process. It may be worth doing it with the new discs. Yeah. Probably worth doing it. Probably, little, probably worth doing it. In. We'll do the. We'll put the link up there. And, and there's a special mode you put your car into, and you have to drive your car along and put your handbrake on and do it. How many times? Ten, Ten times. times. You have to. So you, you have to stop using the handbrake, and it's to, yeah. It's, it's a, a little it's bit of a palaver. You get a message up on you. It's quite tricky. Have a look at that video. Right. So we've done that. We're all adjusted. Right now, we just need to put the caliper back on. Slider first. Right then. So let's get the slider. We're gonna before we put this on. We're going to put the little, it's easier, I think, just to put these these in. If I can get them right. Just clip those in. Easier than doing it under the car, possibly. That's it. That's it. So these are the, the springs, the shims for that hold your pads. They yeah. locate your pads and all them. Get that central there. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to get it far off there. It's got... It's got tabs. Oh, it's got little tabs on the side, isn't it? It's got little tabs to stop just about every which thing. bloody direction, which makes them a bit fiddly, but... Ah. you kind of got to spring them apart, haven't you? you got to open them up a bit. Come on. There you go. Look how nice that is, all shiny and new. Right. Okay, and then we're gonna bolt that onto the hub. We've got our hub bolts here. Right. Then. It's gonna be a shame to use these brakes with them all colour coordinated like this. It's gonna look flash through the wheels though. Our red and gold. I'm gonna better stop on a sixpence. Tighten those up now, Ian. Yeah, we should be able to. Yeah. They only go in one place. You haven't got much. They can't really wander. Are we on there? We've got the 15 ready yet. Yeah, it should be. There to go. Ian, 
You don't really want to put any copperies on these. They came out dry, so we're putting them back in dry. We don't really want them doing these. We did put a bit of copper grease on that tapered bolt that locates the, uh, the disc as they have a tendency to seize up. Yeah, that little Torx bolt in there. Now we can copper grease. Copper grease, right. Well, you wanted to. So we just put a little bit on the end tabs. You don't want to go getting it everywhere, and it only needs a, a small skin in it. it. Doesn't need to be covered in it. That'll just help it slide in because that's the two contact patches that that pad moves back and forth on. So you don't want that season. You got a proper. Clip them into one end. Oh, he's pushing that one away. Because you're not lined up properly. There you go. Yeah. So we only put them where we need it because otherwise copper grease gets everywhere and you'll get it all over your fingers and you'll put it all over your brake pads. All over your brake discs. All over your discs. So just put it where you need it to start with until you got your pads in. Nice, isn't it? Now we can put a smear on the back of the pads. Yeah, just so, outside pad you want it at either end. Hold on, outside pad, yeah. And then inside pad, which is where the piston is, you want it in the middle. Yeah, because we've only got a single Because you've piston. only got a single piston on these. So you only need that where you're actually... Where it's actually pressing against it. Yeah, pretty obvious, yeah. Right, take these bolts out. These are your 13s. Have fun trying to get that on there otherwise. So we obviously reset our original caliper earlier using a big screwdriver. Um, but this is our new caliper. I've just got these, so these this bellows are reset. actually acting as springs, so you have to compress those to get it over. Um, but if you didn't have any luck compressing your piston back in, you'll have to put a G clamp on it at this point for your new thicker pads. Um, worth noting that calipers are handed if you're fitting new calipers. You'll notice we've got an L here. Um, there's a right on the other side. Right. right, and now we're, what, what we'll probably get into trouble here, we'll go to tighten it and it's spinning. So we need to get the spanner on that. These did have Loctite on them, didn't they? They were, you could Loctite these. They, the factory ones had Loctite on them, didn't they? Yep. So if you've reused your calipers, you should now be good to go. Make sure everything's tight, but you should be good to go. Put your wheel back on, everything's done. Use your brakes, bed your brakes in first. Don't go striving off the drive and thinking they're going to be brilliant because they're going to have to bed in a bit. You're going to have to clean any, by braking you'll clean any um, grease or any oil you've got on there and get this coating off. So don't go going crazy the first time you drive. Um, and also when you, the first couple of presses of the brake will just push the pistons in. So press your brakes a few times before you even pull away. Uh, but yeah, we've fitted our new painted calipers, so we're going to have to swap our lines over in bits and bleed it all up now. But that's the job done. Good luck with that.